How are you? Excuse me. Here um, with another lecture on um, kind of like the adventure of what we're doing, the adventure of of new materials, new sources, new UI, new UX, user interface, user experience. Um, um, we left off with a notion of the Greeks through the internet, what is being performed, what is being said. Um, one of the individuals I love um, admiring and knocking at the same time is Aristotle, how he um, quantified everything in this semiotic square of a square of oppositions yet um, definitely had an agenda for um, uh, formulating opinion of the general masses and m m kind of make them obedient. Uh, Brecht and Boal were individuals who said, no, these are spaces of change. They're not spaces of limits, uh, not space of eternal tragedies, which accepts the um, ruling classes as ultimately uh, noble but tragic in their aspirations. According to Gebser, the, the um, Greeks believed in limits. They, um, you can see it in their architecture, you can see it in the semiotic square, the square of opposition. They love limits. Um, beyond their limits, they could not fathom. So they tended to have self-contained referential systems. Even Plato, which uh, describes illusion very poetically in, in the, the cave metaphor of shadows flickering in a cave. Um, but this, according to Gebser, proceeded from the, the magical, the mythic, the classical, the magian. He said that the religious spheres of Islam and Christianity uh, we're looking for states of um, consensus. What do we see? So the limits are transcended and it's more, you know, do you see an all-knowing, omniscient, uh, all-loving God uh, to which um, uh, the Christ figure was uh, a sacrifice son? Do you see um, the concept of brotherhood in Islam? Do you move further out into um, that's the Magian and it uh, culminated or changed again a perception shift in a city that I'm going to teach in the summer. You're all welcome to come. Um, Florence, Italy, where uh, uh, we entered the perspectival era. This is Gebster, who was kind of a Jungian Swiss guy um, who was big fan or at least use a structure, um, Hegel, Hegelian uh, uh, historical sensibilities that history is the consciousness. Um, we're doubting that uh, now because of our uh, uh, propensity to repeat even the worst mistakes of history. Um, he was a fan of Spengler who supposedly is on more of a right-wing uh, conservative. I don't really think so. Some of these people, Nietzsche was a big influence in his aphoristic way of approaching uh, uh, reality, breaking down logic as, as uh, a form, finally breaking down the Aristotelian um, square of oppositions into, so the perspective, perspectival out of the Greeks form this view that uh, we're unlimited. The Renaissance people, uh, two column accounting, were unlimited. What you put as asset, you put as deficit. Um, with this quantification, looking out at the future, we're unlimited. We can keep on going. Um, sky's the limit, the moon's the limit, planets, whatever. And they reflected that in their paintings, most notably Masaccio, Piero della Francesca, and Leonardo da Vinci. Placing, manipulating, forming, um, uh, also Bernaleski, who, um, no, Alberti, um, the painter, theoretician, architect. These were polymaths. These were people who said, man, there's no limit to what I do. I can do sculpture, I can do painting, I can do uh, architecture, um, I can do poetry. 
Um, let me at, let me add them. This is a first kind of early capitalist form of mercantilism that came out of of the city states of Italy, kind of some of the first to recover from, let's just say, the Magian view, the consensus view that if you work on a huge cathedral for 300 years, you're somehow saved. This is the birth of the individual vision. The individual artist looks forward and back at him is the eye of God in the form of a humanist one-point perspective, looking back. Um, very, very, very fascinating to find these modalities. They are just modalities, gang. There are ways, tropes, uh, 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 scaffolding to which we can see the world. Um, people are scared of modalities nowadays because we're judging people on their so-called interior landscapes. This, I think, is an outgrowth and a function of the internet. Anyway, let's go further. Um, with the Renaissance perspectival approach to life, counter to the Greeks who like, ooh, we better contain our world, we better understand, which ironically had people like Pythagoras and uh, some of the other Egy Greek Egyptian mathematicians that figured out that the world was round because of that famous um, sun and shadow experiment from Cairo or down to Thebes um, and and very accurately uh, calculated the curvature of the earth, which again, you can see as limits. Um, we, uh, 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 Gebser's book, Sean Gebser's book is called The Ever-Present Origin. We do live in our lives, all of these roots, all of these influences from the, uh, the, the magical to the mythic, to the classical, to the magian, to the perspectival, We've crashed through the A perspectival, as demonstrated by the French um, post-impressionist painters. Subjectivity is important. What do you see? Um, Cezanne, um, Seurat, um, Gauguin. Um, what, what's 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 underneath? What's underneath the the um, the iceberg? Um, Freud uses an iceberg model. Jung starts talking about things speculatively, also another modality, not really science, but a modality toward a science, a hypothesis. He starts talking about what uh, we are now finding out through epigenetics, um, uh, what, what actually, how actually, to paraphrase, the DNA actually communicates with the brick and mortar world. A perspectival relativity, the big names are those painters and Einstein and the early physicists of the early 20th century that start talking about, you know, these are outsiders, renegades. Uh, Einstein was working at a patent office as some kind of stupid um, uh, a day job, you know, having not been able to get other jobs or what, you know, the given track. So we see uh, leaving the Magian world of consensus, is this right, is this right, um, into uh, using math to describe relative relativity, what reality does consist of. We now have uh, things such as strong forces, weak forces, physics and, and um, high level theoretical math kind of charting out these worlds that are very out there, um, and um, uh, 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 have very little bearing on the Newtonian world. We're down here, we're living on this Newtonian physics level, part of the Renaissance way of looking at things, <coughs> and furthermore, and so forth, and furthermore. Um, uh, so here I have, how do we design, how do we take Assuming that we're in this a perspectival world, we're shattering the Greeks, we're shattering the Magian early religious states of the the medieval ages, both medieval uh, Christianity, medieval Islam. We can talk about India and China. We can talk about early globalism. Of course, China had maintained 
um, a strength of higher G GDP than, than Western cultures at that point. India had advanced states. The Mughals came in through the north. Um, so for the sake of talking about what are we designing, how do we design, how are we influenced, what are we looking for, what kind of material, um, why is originality so important in the West, you know, and collectivity so important in the East. Um, I've lived in Korea for two years. I've lived in Singapore. I've worked, at, lived in Tokyo. Um, there's a different, uh, in general, collectivist mindset than in the West, which says, make things unique, make it creative, make it yours. And this is springing out of the French impressionist, post-impressionist. Um, into um, the physicists, into um, people like to call it the, the postmodern world where we're remashing, reusing these bigger narratives, but I just call it something non-described yet. Um, uh, so here we go. I'm looking for a gig. I'm looking for a site-specific gig. I'm looking for a transportable material. I'm looking for these things on the beach. Um, anywhere, and I'm looking for form. I'm going to be delighted by form. I got my pencil. I got my sketchbook. I've got um, other sorts of things I can do with these uh, objects. I've got um, a kind of a transdisciplinarity here, as mentioned. Um, uh, uh, we uh, time and space interdis stakeholder holder and uh, involvement which means you um, research um, we're entering a post disciplinary society that's why I wanted you to write um, op-ed pieces in the form of blogs um, one page reactions to the complexity you're seeing here's a little snapshot of my stuff often using fabric to project on I hate flatness um, and um, uh, furthermore, there's a thing called the Reality Deck at Stony Brook Wireless Center, which has a lot of these expensive TVs all hooked up. And I wanted to show, I work a lot with Modern Dance, show how the body in time becomes actually a sculptural item. A moving sculptural item, but through the relativity of time, it becomes a, a point blank a sculptural item, an installation. So here is the reality deck at Stony Brook with these big, high density Samson TVs hooked together. This is a two, three million dollar space. Uh, they did open colonoscopy here. Um, uh, stuff like that. Um, but uh, uh, down below it is a, a dance study, Frozen in Time by Photograph. Um, I find these forms endlessly exciting. They both have the sense of, 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 of a designer mind, a will, a volition, and natural organic uh, pro procedural things. Um, a lot of what the current architecture, sculpture, and interfaces with AI is called parametric. And we'll hear that thing again. And I'm going to ask you to do design a parametric piece of jewelry um, out of this. It's organic. It's time responsive. It's got will and human will and volition also. Um, it's part of this a perspectival, post perspectival reaction to the chaos of existence. Here's the center um, at Stony Brook. Um, and here is some of my work. I work with dancers in these tubes. I work with inflatables. I want to project on them. I want chaos back on order and order back on chaos. Interplay, lighting, um, music is added, the audience reaction moving in and through these works. Um, uh, is this as trenchant and as poignant as Thespis standing in front of an Athenian audience and pretending to be someone he isn't? Um, yes. Um, but as the Greeks, uh, uh, there's that saying that Aeschylus was the first dramatist to add a second actor, and we go like, you know, after 
watching many reruns of Friends, we go like, well, what's the biggie? What's 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 the problem, gang? Um, no, we can have a whole sitcom, you know, cast. Um, uh, again, let's look at the Greeks through the frame of Gebser. They were assiduous about limits, defining limits, not going beyond those limits, not freaking out. Um, certainly in their war and their war making with their combination of their navies and phalanxes and they used the long poles, um, they reapplied their limits and knowledge of, of, of conducting war. War is a very important part in all cultures. We tend not to think of, we tend to think of war going away because history as a secular entity is progressing. Oh, is it really? Um, it keeps rearing its head and we wonder why. Here are these design studies of motion, of filters added to motion, um, and these things become sculptures, beautiful sculptures, um, lessons in themselves, meanings in themselves. Um, and um, I have certain software we can use for this. Um, I'll post this in your um, G Drive sites. Um, and uh, this stuff is interesting, um, infinitely interesting to me. Um, here's one that deals with almost a structure, almost a bird-like nest, um, uh, but it's a dancer or a Tai Chi uh, a, a practitioner moving. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous. The immediate reaction is the best reaction. <gasps> you know, the, the sort of kick in the gut, like, wow, what's that? Um, and I proceed along with this designer's intuition. Again, I love the realm of design between maybe the subjectivity of, of gallery art, let's just call it gallery art, where you're, you're the lone, tortured, subjective individual painting your reality, the canvas, the, the abstract, ex American abstract expressionists who are also um, commenting on the Russian, uh, Russian, uh, the uh, Renaissance uh, perspectival world with their flatness, with their color. I think of Mark Rothko. I think of how all these individuals were tortured. Um, uh, 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 Mark Rothko slid his wrist in his studio. Um, uh, Jackson Pollock was a, a kind of a nihilistic suicidal drunk and crashed his car. I think of these worlds of subjectivity um, out there. Of course, their paintings are fantastically expensive now. We put a value on, I contend, that tragedy of the individual. Ironically, um, a lot of what they were doing and evidence was found was funded by the CIA, C CIA to bolster up this concept of Western individuality, um, the modernity that moves towards the individual, not the collective, as in the Soviet Union. So what did these individuals do? A lot of them destroyed themselves. Basquiat um, uh, took a drug overdose very early. We lost an important visionary, or very much like his paintings. A lot of the other histrionic people, there's a good movie called Anna out now, uh, Becoming Anna, I think it is, about the art world and how mercurial and um, like a shadow lands of greed, speculation, chicanery, um, uh, uh, hucksterism that is, yes it is, but um, it's been existing for hundreds of years this way, probably ever since the perspectival world, when people stop assigning sculptures and paintings to churches and brought them into galleries that freed up um, the work of art to become more individual but more mercurial. Um, um, once you have no fame when you're young and whatever, and then you die, then your works become priceless. Um, uh, so society does attribute things to the tragedy of the artist, especially in the West, as the, um, uh, the uh, Cassandra figure, the, the Trojan princess who 
knows the future, says the future, but is condemned by Apollo to have no one believe her. Um, Kafka is a, a modernist uh, author this way who wanted his works burned, so on and so on. Um, I add technology to this as a kind of a poetry, um, playing around with these things in spaces, um, sensors, Internet of Things is a big scary idea that somehow all of these things are out there uh, sensing our lives. Um, these are some um, uh, interesting, um, uh, let's see if I can, no, it's uh, at the limits there. Interesting dance cases. This is a, a Taiwanese group that which the body is measured and recorded by um, a, a infrared camera, much like in the Connect. Remember that old game from the mid, the mid aughts, um, two thousand eight, I think it was seven. I don't know. Came out. I got like three, four, five of them, and they were fun until Apple Company killed the OS from the connects. There was the leap. Um, it could find the body, chart the body, do um, photogrammetry on the body, make a point cloud of the body so you could make the body control things. Um, dance groups I find very stimulating for this. Again, this idea of embracing the a perspectival world. As Gebster said, um, they're in a direct collision um, with uh, the Renaissance, um, uh, the painted, uh, painted word, and going to um, the word painted, as he said in his um, famous book, The Painted Word, Tom Wolfe. Um, the surface was important, and now looking beyond the surface, looking at non-objectivity, which means increased subjectivity, I don't know. Dancers using technology as an interface, as algorithms, as uh, AI to work with, respond to. Um, uh, modern dance is global uh, amongst most cultures, leaving language, which is why scholars often freak out, assuming that what propelled the thousand-year-old academy was um, these McLuhan-esque little ant-like Phoenician alphabets running through many, many, many books. Um, the books were consigned to monasteries and universities. They're very expensive. Once they became inex inexpensive, the libraries prol proliferated, but so did the American University as libraries and research places. The library was the, the citadel in the fort. And now with the internet, we see that split wide open. Um, it is probably spelling the death knell of the Academy as we know it um, for some good and some bad reasons. Um, information is democratized, but I, as, as I heard the quote, um, information does not want to be free. Uh, information wants to be paid attention to. <laughs> There's just too much information. Um, so here are a bunch of dance spaces, very architecturally resonant. The bodies are moving. There's Ari back in the, um, the, the lab at Stony Brook. Um, here's more photogrammetry used as poetry. I did a couple shows with the actor Bill Pullman, which he wanted this photogrammetric capturing of spaces in Montana and brought into um, a gallery in New York. Um, the little ping pong balls on people, there were, um, uh, during COVID, they did uh, Midsummer Night's Dream as basically actors in one cubic space. Um, and that was conjoined with real time, um, almost game like high polygon, very lush. Um, environments where these actors could become creatures and forms and plants and anything. Um, you, the audience, I didn't quite get the kick of this, could become fireflies. And you had a participation. Uh, when I saw it, there were, is a Royal Shakespeare Company, RSC, 
uh, in England, got a $100,000 uh, Unreal Engine grant, um, a game engine company, and they did this production of a dream, they called it. Uh, people running over green screen uh, things with ping pong balls like this, and they became the characters in it. You could watch it from your screen. You could watch it from a VR. Uh, you could watch it from your phone. Um, but the whole thing about being a participant, being a firefly in it, um, a cute trope, but no cigar. Um, uh, I didn't get it. I couldn't find my firefly either. So, um, but even in so-called failures, um, we can't be snide. Um, I'm, I'm not uh, a person who likes snideness in um, this notion of, here, I'll bring myself back. Uh, snideness in this whole notion of, uh, of attempting something new. That's the part of the perspectival Renaissance flavor, um, ever-present origin. It's still there. We value in the West um, and other societies um, new creative things. That's why we footnote. That's why scholars go up their specific rabbit hole for 10, 12, 15 years and specialize in something. Uh, one of my contentions in the a perspectival sense, coming from a very perspecti perspectival industrial flavor to our universities, which are in a, a neoliberal capitalist economy always aims for some sort of a material accumulation. Hey, what's my grade? Hey, what's my credit score? Hey, can I have a BMW before I'm 30? Um, it's, it stifles creativity because we have, we want the direct vectors to capital accumulation. Uh, if I'm a doctor, I'm making 300 thou, right? Um, so um, that has been fractured by the internet, um, amongst other things, uh, general erosion of the middle class, um, uh, these schemes to pay, oops, timer. Uh, schemes to pay uh, 75000 bucks to go to a mini Ivy League and get a substandard education. What else? Uh, straddling you with debt. This relentless, uh, in a neoliberal capitalist society, the relentless um, pedagogy of capital accumulation. How much money will you earn? That, to me, is eroding our discussions of creativity more than cancel culture is. Um, so further further on up. Um, uh, more dance, more dance, more shapes. Um, again, a perspectival, as Gebser might say. Um, here's a green screen in which dancers move and react, and here's some of their, you can barely see it here, but some of their attendant AI, what comes in when they have these things on. She has an, a VR thing on her. There's a, something in the new Oculus called pass-through. You actually see reality in black and white outside of this parameter. You see constructed reality of the, of the um, uh, whatever you created in a game engine. We're gonna be using uh, spatial IO um, you see the other dancers reacting to her. It's the body, it's the body semiotics, it's motion, it resonates with the mirror neurons, it's pre-literal, post-literal, pre-literate, post-literate. Um, even though I'm a big lit geek, um, I do like not just the visual culture of the dance, but the spatial culture. I think that we are poor in spatial culture, therefore I hate flatness. Um, Let's go further. Mood, smokiness, uh, layering, scrim, um, drawing, moving, jumping, uh, repeating. Uh, for those who are skittish and squeamish of VR, the new wireless Oculus 2 has the pass-through feature, which I want to actually do a piece with because it portrays a reality beyond um, other realities, um, uh, in between reality. You can see everything, but you move from portal to portal. Um, in this are some interesting liminal spaces. I am 
adeptly interested, sincerely, um, uh, 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 committedly interested in liminal zones, um, spaces in between. Um, the space in between um, neoliberal capitalist accumulation is a space of collectivity. What, um, if we can't tear the whole system down, what is a middle zone? Um, the middle zones are often the way out. Um, uh, this is a Japanese performer moving uh, stage space, um, moving non-objective forms like Laszlo Maholinaj of the Bauhaus, non-objective art, um, uh, again, breaking down the perspectival uh, Renaissance painting, um, which they called, they worshiped the integrity of the picture plane, the Italians, the Dutch, all the other painters after Albert Dürer went to um, Italy and stopped um, uh, uh, Germany, Byzantium from painting very ethereal stick-like forms, returned back to a study of anatomy that the Greeks and the Romans had. Hellenistic art often had a, a, a very adept portrayal of muscles and, and portrayed um, work, so-called working class figures in a, a very heroic way. Um, people return to forms. Gebser, the the ever present origin. We have we are icebergs. We have roots. Um, we tap into these things. This is the objective. Um, more topographies, more forms. This is beautiful. A dancer being suspended in midair. What I mean is this visual Muzak of a tough-minded critic might go like, oh come on, this is just pretty stuff. Um, yeah, gimmicky, pretty, whatever. I saw this group down here of Japanese dance group, um, uh, kind of a little bit kitschy, yeah, but in pushing the boundaries of techiness and tech fetishizing, they expanded things out. Here they are again. Sometimes they all dress up as nurses, and uh, I don't know what's going on there. But, um, but their forms and shapes are interesting. Um, working the camera with dance, uh, beautiful forms, beautiful athletic bodies, men and women, um, uh, uh, and, and their magic of transcending time-space sculpture with their bodies, with their muscles, with their training, and so forth. Um, and then playing around with an intermediary, which is projected reality. Sitting back here is the audience, the ancient Greek audience, the primordial homo erecti sitting around the campfire. We're sitting back here, we're voyeurs. We're looking at these things with wonder, but also with empathy. Empathizing with those next to us, it is complete. Um, more forms um, in the a perspectival vein. Um, more, this is an interesting Taiwanese group that uses um, infrared cameras to cha change the form and shape of the direction of these light forms, much like the French painter Seurat. Uh, and certainly the um, Italian um, futurist painters, who were um, most of them accused of being fascist, sort of celebrating arms, war, um, uh, directives, um, uh, the individual as applied to the, the warlike collectivity. Um, some were more socialist. The, certainly the Italian fascist architecture, uh, some of that you c couldn't even tell the difference between Bauhausian, more left-wing uh, aspects. We can add the element of politics into this. Um, does the apolitical actually exist? Do we even exist on the left-right spectral politics as set forth by Kant and the French Revolution. Um, worrying about kind of meaning, placement, the individual, fraternity, liberté, égalité, um, uh, making a nod toward the collectivity but also making a nod toward the individual. Can we exist with both systems? The artist is portrayed since the Renaissance, unlike the, um, the obscure artists carving away on sculptures and cathedrals are individuals. We 
I don't know, it was Alberti or Brunelleschi who did the dome, um, certainly into Piero della Francesca, Fra Filippo Lippi, um, certainly Michel, uh, uh, Leonardo and Michelangelo, uh, Raphael. Um, these were individuals that emerged having their own studios. They didn't do it all alone. Um, but these are the individual polymaths who kind of took that Greek fear of unlimitedness and said to the world in their tiny cities, warring city-states of basic mercantile, it was the wool merchants and the bankers who started off um, becoming the rich uh, uh, kind of interior economies. You can, we can see that in England and Holland also. That the wool merchants and early um, very early primitive factory systems of making garments and clothing became um, uh, clusters of capital intensity to which the Fugers, the German bankers, came down and speculated on that. This notion of financial speculation also emerges out of the Renaissance perspectival. Certainly after the collapse of markets, the 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 interesting response of the younger generations in their cryptocurrencies, the NFTs. Um, most of my young students know about these in kind of a crib note form. Some have invested in these things. This is, this is the residue from the perspectival system that um, we don't have the aperspectival -persp manipulation and um, uh, nihilism of pump and dump economies. Um, uh, we live with these intellectual histories. Um, simple shadow exercises. The Japanese are doing a lot with this tech projection. This is a Spanish architect who designs these wonderful wire architecture things that then are projected on. These are installations which sometimes become performances. We have performances with installations. We have drama around installations. Um, years ago at, at Yale, MFA, um, we did uh, of, uh, Ulysses uh, uh, and Odyssey in the rowing tanks. Um, uh, going for the site specific. Um, uh, moving, uh, uh, flickering element of time element of just make an installation and the context alone will render a meaning is this liked and loved by the um, uh, method actors, American method actors, new. No. Um, the thing down here is actually clear transparent tape woven over and over again creating a parametric shape, organic um, through process and algorithms inflatable structures. Again, I like them because they're, they can transport flat and they with air or, or, or scaffolding, they become larger. Um, interesting shapes, interesting contextual shapes. I love this circular thing here. Um, uh, um, offering, I don't think this thing was ever built, but designing dreams, designing ways in which you change people's brick and mortar perspectival attitudes in a way becoming a perspectival in its suggestion of what you should do with it. Here's one that's actually built. Um, framing views, framing area, a perspectival views, um, relativistic views. Certainly VR, one of the reasons I like it is that it is a perspectival, it suggests relative positions. We worry about falling down a rabbit hole and waking up years later with a PhD and um, in a very narrow focus range, um, shrugging off our necessity to be a Swiss army knife and actually have multiple skills. We wake up with our PhDs and find the attendant jobs have evaporated. Um, uh, these are interconnected worlds now, gang. These are aperspectival. These means that even in a relative, we're no longer the monolithic Greek classical society. As you know, slaves and women were not allowed, afforded um, positions of hegemony. Um, in the Magian space, we looked at singular visions, usually religious, that allowed all people to correct their 
sense of time to that vision, perspectival focus on the individual, and that's from the medieval cloister, retaining libraries, retaining civilization into the perspectival, into the factory um, model of Henry Ford, Fordist, um, and um, Taylorist um, is the guy who, turn of the 20th century, American um, developed regimen for every worker. Um, so the modern university is a combination of medieval monastery, perspectival Renaissance master, the polymath, the individual, and the American factory. Um, as you can see, all three systems are creaking, they're rusty, they're disintegrating into the infinite aperspectival notion of the internet. Um, in my urbanism class, I'm comparing, um, saying uh, uh, the 6,000 year old city as a, as a coagulation, a confluence, a, a, uh, a overcoming of space with time and time with space, condensed space, um, as a place where young people can enter into and change their gene pool as a place of diversity and inclusion, um, a place of meritocracy, um, the internet is the next sibling. It's doing some of the same things, finding connectivity, finding uh, a re-fertilization of ideas, um, you know, as we can see with the, the monopolies that tend to want to break that down. But um, we have many, 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 many rabbit holes which is why going, actually getting up, getting a subway ticket, getting a train ticket, don't drive in, to the cities and going to a museum is part of the um, exercise, but the healthy function of seeing what these aperspectival individuals are working on. Ooh, I love this. Um, uh, different views in an installation is saying, someone thought this was worthwhile, a committee, uh, a paid staff, um, I'm gonna see it. I'm going to walk around with my feet, my tired feet. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to pay to go see it. In a way, it, it retains a processional value. It retains that classical Greek sense. There, there are limits to what I can do in a day walking through the Met. Um, perspectival, there are limits to what um, an individual artist can say, or there are unlimited aspects to what an individual artist can say and are valued by other people. Hence the rise of the NFT and the cryptocurrency affecting um, affection and um, uh, obedience to different forms. But it's also a perspectival. Um, your feet are doing the voting. Your feet are doing the work. You've got boots on the ground. You're going to see these wild and wonderful things. You're talking about it with other people. These are all of um, these inflation structures that this artist makes. This is Vito Acconci, um, a perf performance installation artist that started doing these architectural things. Um, I, again, I like traveling with these site-specific things because they inflate. Um, uh, these have a resonance. Um, um, these have an interactivity with audiences. Um, I just geek out with this stuff. I think it's all nice, incredible. I can flip these little screens up all over the world and see this is a simple inflation installation. Um, various levels of complexity or refinement. Um, here's how to make, have kids make these inflatables, usually out of Home Depot construction plastic glued together, ironed together. Um, but they, they talk about, uh, uh, Olaf Ellison, um, they talk about um, um, new ways of seeing, new ways of seeing um, the origins. This is uh, Burning Man. They do a lot of installations. I'm doing a whole section on that. Just these, fa I think this is Coachella. Um, these festivals which gather people and try to um, give these rabbit holes a, a sense of brick and mortar. Um, um, I go and am going tonight. More Burning Man. You ride around on the 
playa, the plaza, the flatlands, the desert, and you look at these things. You hang out, you do your various algorithms at night, um, which are supposedly more or less anarchic and free, um, but they are typical Northern California and do have certain limitations um, to it. Uh, collectivist projects, um, responding projects to um, uh, forms. This is form. This is part of your, this is something you can get on eBay. Not cheap. It's like 700 bucks or something. Um, and big turds. I don't know what these are. Um, and these people working out their own art. Pretty ironic. Um, a photo of the tank man with rubber duckies as tanks. Um, very interesting, very compelling, um, uh, compelling forms. Um, I'm going to flip through this fast structures, uh, using technology, using a public and artist trust that these will be interesting. Scale is huge, which is always a good part. And we go into the costuming, um, which is on a file I'll put on your, your, um, um, the, the costuming, the wearable technology reflects this. Beautiful forms. Um, that is it for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and um, we will um, go on to more um, further lectures. Take care.